Good evening and welcome to the Financial Week. I'm Javon Keyes. Let's start off with some company news. In a week, Justice David Batts is expected to tell the receiver for the Ocherus based Mystic Mountain, Wilfred Bagalu, whether he can proceed with the sale of the adventure to a company. The company went bankrupt during the pandemic and is in the hands of its creditors. Hearings in the case were held on Wednesday and Thursday at the Supreme Court, days after Justice Batts approved an amended list of creditors who will be allowed to claim compensation once the business is sold. The secured creditor Sky High Holdings Limited is owed $1.1 billion and is expected to get a full payout on the bonds it holds. Another 20 unsecured creditors have been recognized by the court, which means they may be considered for compensation. Justice Batts is expected to hand his decision hand down his decision by the end of next week. And of course, we'll continue tracking that story for you. Let's head to some news from NCB. The financial group says while there is no plan for mass layoffs, there may be some restructuring. In a briefing on Thursday, the company's interim CEO, Robert Almeida, says as assessments continue, there could be some staff changes. There are things that are changing all the time. There's a, a branch opening here, a digital channel opening there, something closing somewhere else. So when that happens, some, some job is made redundant and some other job is created. So that I would say, it would be impossible for me to say there's zero. So there will always be, in an organization like this, there will always be redundancies. It's a large organization. There always will be. It's a dynamic world. Yeah. But there's just not any plan to say, hey, let's go out and cut X amount of staff because that's the way we're going to hit our cost income ratio. Now, in the last few weeks since the interim leadership has been appointed, Mr. Almeida says between six to eight billion dollars in possible cost savings have been identified. To some news relating to our parent company, the RJ Aglina Communications Group registered a loss in its first quarter ended June. For the three-month period, a $37.8 million loss was realized, reflecting a marginal improvement compared to the $39.8 million loss made in Q1 last year. Now, RJ Aglina's revenues were slightly down in the quarter, coming, at, coming in at $1.297 billion compared to $1.298 billion last year. The entity says the reduced income was due mainly to lower advertising spend by clients. It says businesses are still tight on their advertising budgets as they continue their post-COVID-19 recovery. The group, however, managed to reduce expenses by 5% or $32 million. To the foreign currency market now, banks and cambios are selling the U.S. dollar for an average $155.50. $115.84 is the going rate for the Canadian dollar. The average cost for the pound is $199.92, while it's costing $172.48 for the euro. The JSE index lost 2,293 points, while the junior market index lost 11 points. Among the 39 winners were Productive Business Solutions 10.5% Perpetual Cumulative Redeemable Shares, Everything Fresh, 138 Student Living Jamaica Variable Redeemable Preference Shares, JMB Group 7% Variable Cumulative Redeemable Preference Shares, and Stanley Mota. The 42 losers include ISP Finance Services, Medical Disposables and Supplies, Honeybun, JMB Group 7.15% Cumulative Redeemable Preference Shares, and Express Catering, 28 Stocks Traded Firm. And that's the Financial Week. I'm Javon Keyes. Good evening.